Hey guys, welcome back. We're actually coming off a video where we actually removed and demoed an old wired alarm system. And now we have ordered a new wireless up-to-date system and we're gonna put it in today. So let's see what we got. So after ripping out the old wires and touching up the walls, we took a walk around the house and determined how many contact and motion sensors we needed. Since we all have a different space, we all have a different number. Whether you have an apartment, condo, townhouse, or a house. Knowing that number is the first step in the planning process when you're self-installing a new updated wireless security system to protect you and your family. So one of the reasons I went with Ring is because they actually gave you the option of going with a service or self-monitoring. And I really respected that. There was other companies that said, well, we're not going to let you have the app unless you go with our service. And that was kind of like, do this or else. And I didn't really like that. So I went with Ring knowing they had self-monitoring. I really liked that about them. So I'm not getting the service right away but there's a very good reason for that. See, when you're self-installing your own system, you're gonna have different things that you're gonna have to adjust. So I'm gonna self-monitor for 30 days, 100%. I already decided that. And once I go through the 30 days, it's kind of like a test period, you know? And if I get false alarms, I'll know I have to adjust. I'm kind of making a point about the false alarms because different townships have different agreements. Some of those agreements are, hey, you know what, on your first, false alarm will give you a break but on the continuous false alarms we're going to charge you x amount of dollars so it's probably a good idea if you call your local township and ask them what their policy is on false alarms but i just wanted to give you a little heads up on the system itself before we take a look at our hardware now let's see what we got before we start you will need to plug your base station into a wall outlet with the provided power supply that goes without saying now, if you lose your internet under self-monitoring, your system will go down. However, if you have a Ring Protect Plus plan and you lose your internet, but you still have power, your system will stay online over cellular until you get your Wi-Fi back up. If you lose power altogether, you only have the 24-hour backup on the base station itself. That's just some upfront information I found out that I wanted to share with you guys. Now let's go over the rest of the battery life cycles with the rest of the components in the system. When the keypad is fully charged with the keypad adapter, that charge could last up to seven months in power save mode. In the contact sensors, they have two thin round CR2032 lithium batteries that will last up to three years. And finally, the motion sensors take two double A's lasting up to one year. All life cycle predictions depend on individual use. Okay guys, so this is the ring system. You have your base station here. I have my power supply here for the base station. I have a range extender. I have a keypad adapter, which actually plugs in to charge this keypad here for up to a seven month charge. I have a motion detector one and another motion detector right here. And I also have five contact sensors. And this is what it looks like. It's pretty simple, and this even comes with a little quick start guide, how to actually place your contact sensors, where you install each of these sensors is completely unique to your layout. So at this point, you should have the Ring app pre-installed on your Apple or Android phone, and your base station plugged in and your keypad plugged in to start charging them. A little lesson learned for you guys, you may wanna have your GPS and your Bluetooth on before you start the process of hooking up your base station to your wireless connectivity. So the next step is to open the app and connect our base station to our Wi-Fi network. So we're gonna do that right now. So as we open up our Ring app, Always Home, we are gonna to go to the top left corner and we're gonna press that. We're gonna set up a device and we're gonna to go to security and then we're gonna to go to base station that's going to show our address and we're going to confirm that and then press continue. This is going to show you to pick a good spot for your base station. Then it's going to go into Bluetooth setup. 
uh, connect your base station to the ring app, press the pairing button on the rear of your base station. When the LED light ring on top starts to spin, tap Find My Base Station. And then we saw this screen and we had to confirm our GPS was on. It was actually off. So we confirmed it was on, then press try again, hit the pairing button and then find my base station. And the next screen that came up was internet connection. We press Wi-Fi. And after selecting our network, we keyed in our Wi-Fi password and then press continue. So at this point, guys, during a Wi-Fi setup, it'll start to configure and update all your current software and firmware updates and security updates just to make sure you are current with your existing system right now. If all goes well, you should see this screen prompting you to connect your other devices one at a time, along with your solid blue light on your base station, as well as a green Wi-Fi and power signal. The next step after that is to hook up your keypad and your range extender and the contact sensors. And we're gonna go over that right now. Okay guys, so here we are setting up the keypad and we're gonna go into our app. We're gonna press menu, set up a device, security, keypads, keypad for ring alarm second gen. This is what we have right now. And we're gonna say ready. It's gonna say scan QR code, which is on the opposite side. And we're going to put it right over the QR code. It's going to say, use this code. We are. Plug in the keypad. This usually, it says keypad isn't connecting. It's very common, I think, with the Android devices. But I just unplugged it and plugged it back in. Put got it. It says preparing device, adding device. And the next thing it's going to pop up is configuring device. Which is doing right now. And all the other sensors are the same thing. It says device added, tap here to set it up. Uh, let's set up your keypad. We're gonna put it in the laundry room. Keep, we're gonna name it keypad. We're gonna continue and success. So we are set with this keypad right now. There's one other thing I wanna go over. If I have a keypad and the base station in the same room and I punch my code in, both devices will sound and they're not synchronized in the voice. Home and armed. So there's two voices there and they're totally not synced. So I really don't need the volume on here because every time you punch in the code, it's just pretty annoying to hear two different voices not synchronized. So what I can do is go into the keypad, go into audio settings, put my volume down, press save. And now if I punch in my code, it'll just say disarmed at the base station only. However, if you are installing this away from your base station, I would recommend you keep the volume up. So the next thing we want to put in is a range extender. So we're going to work on that right now. Just a quick note on the range extender, guys. The range extender doesn't increase your Wi-Fi. The range extender increases the range between your base station and your ring alarm components. So I would put it somewhere in the middle of the base station and your components, and you should be fine. Okay, so we're gonna go into the app, main menu, set up a device, security, range extenders. We're gonna go to second gen range extender. We're gonna go ready. It's gonna say scan the QR code. It's gonna say use this code. Plug in the range extender. So we're just gonna go right over here. Plug it in, light starts to blink. Adding device. Configuring device. Device added, tap here to set up. Let's set up your range extender. Continue. It is in the kitchen. We're calling it range extender and that's success. And that's it for the range extender. It's that simple, just like everything else. So now we're gonna to go to the contact sensors. Now the contact sensors are a little more involved because you have to actually install them on your doors and your windows. 
So let's see what that brings us. Okay, we're gonna go into our Ring app, go to our main menu, set up a device, go into security, go into sensors, and we're gonna pick the contact sensor for the Ring Alarm second gen. We're gonna press ready. We're gonna scan the QR code. This one's already on the door, so I'm just showing you guys for demonstration purposes. And we're gonna use this code. Then you're gonna see pull the tab on the back of the sensor with the little blue arrow on it. Just pull that out so the batteries will connect. And now the contact sensor isn't connecting, no problem. You just press the button on the outside of the contact sensor. And the light should start flashing and now it's gonna prepare the device, add the device and configure the device. And as soon as it adds it, it should chime. There it is, device added. Tap here to set it up. So we're gonna set it up. Press continue. This is the main door. This is the front door. And we're gonna call it front door. Uh, we know to choose the side without the door hinges. <laughs> we're gonna clean it with isopropyl alcohol. And we're gonna press continue. Now this is just showing us the maximum distance between the center and the magnet, and also to leave enough room to change the battery. And now we're gonna mount the sensor. Okay, so we have some isopropyl alcohol on here and we're just going to clean the area where we're going to have the adhesive apply onto and the first piece we're going to put on is the actual sensor and it's going to peel that back and we're going to put this right about there That's on there good. Okay, I'm not gonna worry about that. Uh, the next piece we're gonna put on is the actual magnet and we're gonna take the backing of the adhesive off of that. It comes off just like this. Very easy. Okay, and we are gonna place this on this part of the molding that we just cleaned. And so there we have it. Now we hear it. It actually works and it's also coming up on the phone. That it's, it's letting you know your front door was open at 10, 11 a.m. So that's pretty good. So that's basically how you install a contact sensor on a door. And I will show you this. Let me bring you guys over here. Again, it doesn't have to match perfectly. Okay, you see how far this sticks out and how far that's in? You don't have to shim this out in order for it to meet 100%. It can be offset. So that's one thing I really like about this system because on the windows, it was actually offset. On almost every mount I had, it was offset. There was no perfect match for the contact sensors. So in a nutshell, that's how you put on your contact sensors. Just to go over our installs thus far, while utilizing the outlet in our laundry room, I decided to install our base station on top of the window and use the heavy duty staple gun with wire tacker staples to secure the wire along the window molding for a nice finished touch. While the base station didn't come with any hardware, the keypad mount did. I used a 3 16 drill bit to install the provided wall anchors and screws. While having a new mobile keypad is a nice feature, I still keep it in the laundry room so everybody knows where it is. Here's the range extender. Here's the door in the laundry room leading to the garage. Here's a window in the kitchen. Here's another window in the kitchen, the back door, and the door we just did.
Okay, so last but not least, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna install the motion sensor, okay? There's a lot of different settings on this, but I'm gonna have another video after this called Tips and Tricks on the Ring System. There's a couple things I wanna cover. I just didn't have enough time on this video. So let's go hook up the motion sensor. So here's the motion sensor box, and this is the actual motion sensor. And on the here's the button on the front of it, just like the contact sensor. And on the back you have an adhesive strip here. You have four adhesive strips. One, two, three, four. The ones on the sides mount in the corner of a wall, and the ones flush on the back mount flat on a wall. It's a pretty cool motion sensor, and I'm definitely looking forward to installing it. Just the only thing is, you have to remember with this, this is probably your number one reason for false alarms. So it's really important you install it correctly and fine tune it correctly so that you don't have any false alarms. So let's go to the app. I'm pretty sure you guys have this down by now, but we're going to do it anyway. We're going to go through the app. We're going to go to main menu. We're going to set up a device. We're going to go to security. We're going to go to sensors. We're going to go to motion detector second gen. We're going to press ready. We're going to press scan QR code. This one's right off the box. We're going to select use this code. If it's not connecting, we're going to press the button on the outside of the sensor. Hit got it. Now it's adding device, configuring device, device added. We're going to press continue, pick a room, select dining room, motion detector. This is showing you the seven, six measurement from the floor and different areas where you can mount your motion detector. And this is how you're going to test your motion detector. Walk in front of it, motion detected. And that's how you test it. Now that's great. That's successful. However, there are more settings I want to touch on before we leave today. So if we go back into the main menu and we go in devices and we scroll up and we go into our motion detector, we're going to press on the left in the middle motion settings. So this is the area right here where you have your low, medium and high detection settings. If you have a dog, I would automatically go in low detection, test it out for two weeks and see if you get an alert on a motion detection while your alarm is armed. And even if you didn't have any pets, I would still only test it in medium detection mode first for two weeks, just to see if you're gonna get any false alarms during your self monitoring. So once you actually decide on an option, select that option and press save. Okay guys, so that's about it for installing the Ring alarm system in your home. There's more to come because they have a lot of options available. And in the next video, not only are we gonna have tips and tricks, we're also gonna show you how to hook it up to your Alexa system, okay? So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got a lot out of it. If you did, please like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next video.